ಮಹಾಭ್ಯಾಂ ಜಗದ ಪ್ರಳಯೋದಯೋ ಶಕ್ತಿಚಕ್ರ ವಿಭವ ಪ್ರಭವ ಶಂಕರ ಶಕ್ತಿಚಕ್ರ ವಿಭವ ಪ್ರಭವ ಶಂಕರ ವಿಶ್ವಸೂತ್ರ ವಿ ಹಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ ಸೂತ್ರ ನಂಬರ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಹೃದಯ ಚಿತ್ತ ಸಂಘಟ್ಟ ದೃಶ್ಯ ಸ್ವಾಪದರ್ಶನ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಅಚೀವ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ಎನ್ಲೈಟನ್ ಸಾಧಕ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ತ್ ಸೂತ್ರ ವಿಸ್ಮಯೋ ಯೋಗ ಭೂಮಿಕ ಇಚ್ಛಾಶಕ್ತಿ ರುಮಾ ಕುಮಾರಿ so after this uh, practice of consciousness or awareness seeing that what is happening so he is an observer so when he gets uh, the stage of observance he will have many siddhis so called siddhis to so, vismaya ha wonders although all these siddhis are connected to mind only no siddhis beyond mind His mind is not working then there is no siddhi so the sadhaka is creating siddhis by using his special mind so the specially trained mind in vedanta we say the siddhis are all intellectual developments it means what we think as intellect is not an intellect this this intellect mind and previous impressions previous memories samskaras they all together creates all this on uh, no, different kinds of achievements our physical body is also made of previous karmas similarly the mind therefore these are all uh, achievements of mental states even though they are mental achievement but it is useful for sadhakas to inspire them because if we get some sort of achievement some benefits so he will be in, uh, more interested to practice so without achievement uh, the interest will not come therefore these are all necessary so now we are going along with uh, that special achievements the next uh, sutra it says shuddha tattva sandhananat vapa shuk shakti hi shuddha tattva sandhananat vapa shuk shakti hi so the separation of words shuddha tattva sandhanat va apashu shakti so another means for this achievement the shuddha tattva sandhanat shuddha tattva means pure principle shuddha means pure tattva means principle or an entity or we can say the uh, the uh, essential nature of an object is called tattva 
So Shuddha Tattva, the thing as it is, is called Tattva. Tattva means what the thing is, the object is made of. If we know by that, it is called Tattva. The origin or the cause of the object. Anything we can call it is Tattva. So that, uh, that Shuddha Tattva. Now, Shuddha Tattva Sandhanat. By constantly in awareness of the pure existence or consciousness that is called Shuddha Tattva Sandhana. This is word Sandhana is used for awareness in one sense, in another sense contemplation, connecting with that. So we connect one thought to another and we connect one object with thoughts through uh, sense organs uh, in the case of outside objects and inner objects like what are there in the mind is connected with that. So that is called Sandhana. The thing is there are many objects in our mind which is in the process of manifesting. So we don't know what is there in our mind. We don't know the next year what will happen, next month what will happen, next day what will happen, and next hour what will happen. But according to our karma theory, everything is there in you. But unfortunately, or we are unable to recognize them and analyze them. Therefore, uh, we feel that uh, we are, uh, we are, we have to achieve all those things. Actually, they are all there. Only to identify them and recognize them. So then it will come. The karma theory says, if you, if you don't have that vasana, the quality, the origin of a thought, that is why I am saying about the vasana. If it is not there, you cannot make a thought or desire. So the desire has some link with the previous connect, previous object, previous achievement. So what you already have. So if you identify that, it will come. It is easy for that. You will understand yourself. You will understand what I can do, what I can achieve. What is my tendency? In which uh, job or which work I will be completely successful? So if you go with your tendencies, it means you are going with your original mind. So in that, you can achieve special things in the world because each, each individual is created extraordinary. It means a special. It is a special a species. So each one has some speciality. But unfortunately when we go to schools and colleges and study all these materials, the generalized materials, we study in a, in a compound, uh, no classroom with all other students. So there uh, every, everybody is thought the same thing. Now we don't know what is happening. Sometimes we are, uh, we can accept some of the points or sometimes we cannot. So then what would happen after a long study when we are out of universities after graduation on the others? We don't know what to do. Because whatever we study is not cooperating with our thought process, our tendencies. We're not going along with it. So then people search for their own activities and such. And some, most of the people, they will get some, uh, some program or some idea, some uh, uh, objects from their studies. Because they can connect their, themselves with the studies. Some cannot. It means 
there is some special qualities in each individual that should be identified and we if we identify them and encourage them and develop them you can achieve the maximum in this world this is the technique we use here so that is why we say the shuddha sattva santana the shuddha sattva we can uh, think about the ultimate principle ultimate uh, consciousness of the experience of consciousness the purest form of shiva everything can come the shuddha tattva means the seeing thing as it is or knowing thing object as it is this in the case of thought in the case of external objects okay so then what would happen apashu shakti hi so then that individual will overcome the power of animals it is so we have the power of animals the pashu shakti so normal normal thing we have as other animals have we also have the quality is the same so we will uh, this individual can uh, go beyond that limit so you will get special shaktis which is not connected to animals so what what is the pashu here the pashu means the individual who is working or acting under some influence is called pashu so pashu the word means is animal but implied meaning is is something or somebody is working under some influence is called pashu so we are all living under some influence that the influence is what i just now said so the preconditions of the mind the preconditions of the society so this will block many of your special qualities on the of the life you are leading the life the all life you will be in that influence so you will not identify your own qualities this is a problem so when we practice yoga meditation and all this uh, uh, special sadhanas we are more connected to our original mind original tendencies vasanas then of course we can see what is there in our mind we can do it or not so uh, the sutra says when you really understand what it is the constant awareness of the pure or connected with the pure that individual will uh, get the original qualities original uh, special qualities and then he is beyond the limit of animal tendencies this is called the inborn tendencies the inborn tendencies animals and humans have the same the humans have the special intelligence of imagination so they can imagine and what on that so this the planning and imagining and all those are the special quality so this will be open revealed to this sadhana what it says so this is also a big achievement if you can open your mind you know what is there in the mind accordingly uh, if you can uh, work then it's very good you see in the world no they have a uh, calculation or uh, they have a uh, no, they made a program for each mind so this mind is this this mind has this iq and this this qualities so they have a made a generalized pattern for these things if somebody is very special uh, suppose we say the beyond this pattern people cannot understand the person and they will say he is unnormal no he, they cannot understand what he has the power 
if he is subnormal then also the same they cannot understand but our uh, scripture says shastra says uh, let the person be normal or abnormal or subnormal but the person will have a special quality that's for sure so we have to identify that quality then we see we can see in the in the um, uh, story of uh, the life of einstein there is a very famous story because he went to, he went he went to school and college was not accepted because he was not a norm he is not he was having special like so you think you don't understand and then it happened like this one of our swami is very famous he was a very good scholar in all the shastras oh he went to uh, one uh, guru uh, for studying in uh, kashi maybe 60 70 years ago uh, then like that he they could not they could not understand they kept him in the kitchen for washing no uh, 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 no cleaning and this it was seva always there but he was not ca- the people who were there the masters they were not caring him but he while doing all this service and attending few of the classes he studied and uh, memorized uh, like our vyakarana sutras and all those by by heart right? and then he just went to uh, study with another master in between you know whenever he get, gets time and he wrote the uh, exam and he, uh, because he was a special so he got the uh, gold uh, medalist and all the thing come gold medalist and that and the answer paper we wrote in uh, nyaya shastra and all the navyanaya the new logic and all those still they keep those answer papers in their uh, pockets so how he wrote it? he wrote all the answers in poems you see <laughs> in navyanaya the he is writing uh, the words and they uh, sanskrit sanskrit poem he answered sanskrit poem so uh, what happened when the teachers the professor saw his answer answer paper they asked they called him to say what he wrote because it was so uh, perfect and uh, everything was there they were they were unable to understand what he wrote so after that uh, uh, he become very famous and like that so this is our special quality because we had a uh, special uh, kind of no mind that the previous connection so with that he came he could uh, learn all this he was mastered in 12 darshanas after uh, maybe 6 and 700 years after 700 years the last century we had a person who was mastered in 12 darshanas is called devadasha darshana kanana panchanana this is a degree no it's a title dwadash darshana kanana panchanana so he was uh, very well versed in all this world darshanas so he wrote books on that so his name is uh, mahamandaleshwar swami kashigananda giri his name you can uh, see in uh, youtube we will get uh, his uh, books and there are so many books he wrote Uh, most of the books in sanskrit and hindi and uh, uh, this uh, he wrote in all the subjects so this is all uh, special cases so we have to find that the inner uh, power in us through mind only this is the meditation here shuddha tattva sandhanat va apashu shakti so then of course here after that after practicing this he will be established in meditation such as he can just identify himself with the consciousness the pure consciousness so whenever he like to do he can do it so he will get the uh, benefit of that so this practice so now that just the next sutra says the clarity of awareness 
the clarity of awareness is called knowledge or we say as a realization this is a clarity of awareness vitark atma jnanam So who has realized this, the existence of consciousness through this special meditation? He will be in that vitarka atma jnanam. So the atma jnana, the self-knowledge, he will get full conviction, full authority in self-knowledge. A complete clarity that I am the consciousness. Chaitanya Matma, the first sutra what we learn. So the full conviction in that. We are all in that Chaitanya Atma, in the Chaitanya consciousness. But we we are we have not we are not cleared our mind. So our mind is not pure to completely accept it. We are more with the objects in the thoughts. Therefore, the full conviction is not there. So, on that, once the full conviction comes, so his uh, knowledge will be clear. That is Vitarka Atma Jnana. So, Vitarka, here it is translated as reflection of his knowledge of the self, all those uh, but this is uh, just a uh, translation. So, Vitarka means vish, uh, the Vishesha Tarka, the special clarity or complete clarity what you learn. This also we, we can see just uh, as I uh, explained just now. When we will be clear about our thoughts, when we know the sources of the thought, the object of the thought, everything when we know clearly, then we can say, I know it and it is correct. Unless then, if somebody asks a question in between about our own ideas, we will be unable to answer. If somebody asks, who are you? If you ask anybody, nobody will answer. Because we don't know who are he. Who am I? They are not clear about it. Some say, no, this physical body and mind, uh, mind combination is called uh, the person or a human being. Now, who is your? Oh, there is no nothing. So then, if uh, there is no mind, it means, if there is no mind there, there is no body, and you are not there. That is what it means. But we have the experience without mind and body in deep sleep. We are there. So the awareness of mind and body or intellect is not our essential or nature. The nature is something different. So similarly, if somebody asks what is what you are thinking about, how you are thinking about, what you are thinking about, sometimes we answer, I am thinking about this object. But how we are thinking about, from where did this thought came, we are unable to answer. What is your future? Always we are unable. These are the uh, problem we are uh, having with the mind. Therefore, our life is, in this sense, our life is uncertain. Okay. We feel always uncertain, unsecure. So we want to secure ourselves. Therefore, we are doing all these things. Whatever we are doing, you know, for that, to secure ourselves. We, we don't know what, we, what would happen. So therefore, these things will be very clear with uh, this person who is meditating on himself. So, Atma Jnana. The Atma Jnana in high level, I am not uh, going to that level and uh, describing. In a practical level, what we uh, learn now, what we understand now also. So, this is what is happening there. So, that clarity of thought will come. Somebody asked, what is knowledge all about? What is, uh, uh, you know, the knowledge what we say as uh, uh, correct knowledge? 
is the clarity of thought. Clarity of thought is knowledge. What is Vedanta? Clarity of thought. If you learn a philosophy and understand all the aspects of the philosophy, all the objects of the philosophy, and then you say, I understand it well. Therefore, the clarity of thought. So the confusion makes all the problems of life. Confusion, what we call as confusion is the confusion we have, as, as objectively we have. But subjectively there are so many confusions. So those confusions are not addressed. The subjective confusions. So we are uh, born with all these subjective confusions. That like we don't know what we are and uh, how this energy is created, how the mind is working, how mind understands objects uh, differently. Uh, so, so, all these things are the subjective uh, So, this is called ignorance or covering the self. Avarana, we call it avarana. The covering the self, we don't know, that's a discovery. It is an illusion. It's a, a type of maya. So, all these are there. For this Atma Jnani, the who has realized this, uh, knowing the subject of his own uh, uh, no, no, consciousness as the main uh, experience, his own experience, or the self-experience, that is called Vitarka Atma Jnana. <coughs> So, now he is uh, very good with his own experiences. He knows what is happening inside. Then he knows the whole world. All the objects of the world, all the happiness of the world. By the subjective confusion is cleared now. I know who am I. Then I know the whole world. That is what is said here. Lokanantaha samadhi sukham. So, Lokanantaha, the world of subject and objects, or the world outside, is called the Lokaha. Ananda means the happiness. The happiness there in the world, the many forms of happiness in connection with the many objects. So that is Samadhi Sukham. That happiness is the continuous awareness of consciousness. Samadhi Sukham. We, have, we, we, we are aware about our own consciousness. But the continuity is not there and the purity is not there. The consciousness is mixed up with objects. Consciousness is mixed up with the mental objects, the objects in the, there in the mind. Here, he has the samadhi experience. The samadhi is thoughtlessness. So there are no objects as such in the mind. And then you are, then he is experiencing his own uh, consciousness. That is called constant and continuous awareness of self. That is called samadhi. This samadhi is uh, not there in Yoga Sutra. The Yoga Sutra is called Chittavritti Nirodha. So this Chittavritti Nirodha is a state of thoughtlessness. You empty the thoughts. Then what would happen? The experience would be drashtav surupe avastha. Then the seer, the experiencer will be there with, all, with his own consciousness. So drashtuhu surupe avastha. Drashta means seer, the knower. So the same thing here is described in a different level. So, Lokanantaha. Now we have so many happiness. So where we can find our own happiness? You know, in the old world there are so many, uh, so many happiness. There is happiness in each object. 
like food has or happiness, uh, water has some happiness, cloth has some happiness, eh? and then uh, what we uh, eat, what we learn, what we hear, and every and all each object there is some happiness. It means the happiness is revealed or experienced after seeing the object. That what is, that is what it means. The object cannot give you happiness. Object itself is not happiness. But through that, object become a medium, an agent who make you happy. So only that agent is called as object. But what we think, this object gives me happiness. Actually, the object is an agent which reveals the happiness inside you. So this is the real understanding of happiness. That is what is called Lokananda. Lokananda, the pure happiness of the world. Samadhi Sukham, that can be achieved and experienced only after practicing Samadhi, emptying your mind. Then you know, oh, oh when I empty my mind, my mind, there are there is full of happiness. There is no need to see outside object. You will be not even interested to open the eyes and see outside object. Because so much happiness is there inside. So this is called Samadhi Sukham. There is no comparison. So whatever we compare with outside object, it's very, very low, very, very less. It will not be connected to No comparison with this. So, when this sadhaka get into this level, the samadhi sukha, then all the happiness are derived from, it is manifesting from this happiness, the original happiness. That is what Lokananda samadhi sukha. You see how the philosophy goes. Philosophy is talking about us. It's not talking about the objects outside. It is talking about our own experiences. So, Loga Anandaha Samadhi Sukham. Now, again, one more means is connected in the next sutra. Shakti Sandhane Sharirutpattihi If I get all the happiness in the world together, then I will be much more interested to get that and I will search for some means, some sadhana to get that. Therefore, he is giving a direct technique to get into that uh, wholesome happiness. Shakti Sandhane Sharira Utpatti. Shakti Sandhana, so this is a union with the power. Sandhana or meditation. So, one pointedness is called Sandhana, this connection, meditation. With the power. So, what was the power? The power was will power, the Icha Shakti. So, what we already discussed about the will power. If one is connected to his own willpower and he uh, believe in that, because we have desires, desires are coming and going, we are unable to catch hold of them. No. How one desire can be uh, as a power for you, as a, as a strength for you? We are unable to do that. Actually, these desires are our strength for working. We know this. If we have strong desire, strong willpower, I will do that work. If I have less desire, I cannot do it constantly. I cannot follow it. I will do for sometimes and leave it and then take another and then leave it, then take the third one and leave it. 
and you will get nothing. So therefore, dependency or believing in the willpower is very important. So the Shakti Sandhani, he says, the Sutra says, you desire and depend on the Icha Shakti, the power of desire, because this is the strength you have in your mind. The Shakti Sandhani, Sharira Utpatti, then what he can do, he can create many bodies as he likes to. Because the thought will create the body. And there is a science which says the connection between mind and body. You know that, that the, in the yoga philosophy we have one theory that the connection with the mind and body. So mind can create body and body can influence mind. So this is there. It is not the body creates the mind. The mind is there before and then body comes. When your mind changes, the body changes, body actions changes. That is obviously seen. So therefore it is said if, uh, if the sadhaka can believe in his own power, the big power he has, then he can create the bodies or whatever forms he wants. The yogi can create many bodies. So this siddhi, this achievement is discussed in Yoga Sutra in detail. How the willpower can create the body. It is there. So we don't create new bodies because already we have one body. It's okay, it is useful. So we can at least, uh, uh, we can use this body correctly and get some work done, something done. So, uh, using, for using this body, we need to train this body. That is why we practice yoga, pranayama and meditation and uh, uh, old sadhana, food and all these things. Why? Because we are training our body and mind. You want to use this body, mind, instruments to achieve all these uh, big achievements, great achievements. So therefore, Shakti Sandhane Sharira Utpatti. So this is a direct cause for the achievement. Bhuda Sandhana Bhuda Pradhaktva Vishwa Sanghatas Bhuda Sandhana Bhuda Pradhaktva Vishwa Sanghatas Then the next sutra says, not only he can create his own desired bodies, but also he can create elements, he can separate elements, he can divert elements, he can change all the changes what he want to do. You see, it is very great achievement. You can do that. So, Bhuda Sandhana. So, connecting the elements, the powers are connected. Because we know the five elements as different powers, different creativities. So, we can use all of them. And Bhuda Prithaktva and separating elements. If he needs to separate one element from another, this is also possible with him. The separation of elements, Buddha Prithakta. Like uh, when he wants to separate the fire from the wood, it's possible he will separate the fire from the wood. Because wood is uh, the element of earth and the fire is the element, the separate element. So he can separate that if he wants. So similarly he can separate the things he wants to separate. So that is called Buddha Prithakta. So Buddha means created entities. Buddha here normally translates that elements, five elements, but uh, the translation goes like uh, created entities. 
any object created is called Bhuta. It can be living beings or non-living beings. They are all Bhutas. So Bhuta, Sandhana, uh, you can connect uh, Bhutas and separate Bhutas by this Vishwa Sanghataha, bringing together everything in the world. Vishwa Sanghataha means he can change anything in the world. So this uh, special Siddhi he can achieve. So bringing together or separating together everything in the world. So uh, that is uh, a special Siddhi uh, ach- uh, achievement of this practice. Bhuta Sandhana, Bhuta Prakatva, Vishwa, Vishwa Sakata. Why? Because, because this willpower is so powerful. When he desires, it would happen. The energy will change. So he can change himself and he can change the elements outside. There is a long theory how it happens. The, pro- uh, the process and the formulas are there. We are not discussing all those because it will take a, a long time for just to discuss this. There are scientific reasons, mental reasons and uh, the sadhanas and, and yoga sutras. There are so many things connected to this. So it seems to be very mystical. Uh, it is a wonders that unbelievable wonders. But it is not. It is a, it's a process. It has a process. Gradual development. Uh, it is based on manifestation theory. But that manifestation we are unable to see by our naked eyes. That's all. We have to understand, we have to know the fear. Like we are talking in the phone and seeing in the mobile phone everything. Uh, if, uh, if you don't know how it happens, so it is a wonder, no? You see everything in uh, your hand. It has a process. So the one, uh, if uh, you study that and you know the formula behind it, how it works, and it is, it, is a, it is like a manifestation. There is nothing wonder. So similarly here also, unless we don't know what is happening there, how it happens, it is wonder for us. When we know it, it is a scientific, physical change process. So that we will learn later. When we develop ourselves more, you know, then, then we will learn. Because the all mystic things we have to learn separately. Shuddha vidyo daya chakre shatva siddhi. So everywhere this Shuddha vidya is mentioned. Shuddha vidya, here vidya means knowledge. Knowledge we connect with awareness. Awareness with the, like we talked, we already discussed in the first sutra, the awareness, experience and consciousness. So when we say knowledge, the knowledge, no knowledge is just knowledge. The knowledge is connected to awareness. So without awareness there won't be knowledge. And without uh, awareness or without consciousness, there is no awareness. The awareness is, what awareness means is consciousness. We are conscious when we are aware. So similarly the words changes, the, maybe the program changes, but the original thing is the same. So therefore Shuddha Vidya means the consciousness, the pure consciousness, the power of consciousness. In technically they say, the Shuddha Vidya and Chakresha, the what here it mentioned is Unmana Vastha. It's called a, it's a, the special stage of Unmana Vastha. The super conscious mind. It's called Unmana Vastha, super conscious mind. It, the level of consciousness is very high. It can know everything. So that super conscious mind, Shuddha Vidya Utayat. Udayas means when it appears, when it, it Shuddha Vidya, when Shuddha Vidya comes into being, it is called Shuddha Vidya Udayad, rising up of Shuddha Vidya, pure knowledge. Chakre Shattva Siddhihi, 
the chakra wherever this chakra comes we have to remember that the collective form of shaktis because here the chakra means that collective form of shaktis is called chakras in uh, uh, kashmir shaiva siddhan so we have uh, all the chakras we have muladhara chakra and ajna chakra and all the chakras in the body these are all uh, energy points the shakti points so shuddha vidya uh, udayat when the pure knowledge comes he gets full control over all the collective shaktis the mastery over shaktis the chakreshatva siddhi so he become chakresha he become shiva he, he can create and he can destroy he can do everything his mind become like that but being a human being he will not do that he will only do for others benefits in the service of others helping others he may do something but uh, he has no deserve as this on you know what i would say that uh, he has no personal achievement he is not interested in that so the chakreshatva siddhi siddha vidya udayat chakreshatva siddhi he they hear it want they he will get all the uh, shaktis and he can do everything what he want so the mastery over the shaktis. महदृदाधानात मंत्रवीरुभव महदृदाधानात मंत्रवीरुभव सो दिस सूत्र इज द कंक्लूशन ऑफ द फस्ट पार्ट फर्स्ट बार वी हाव कंप्लूटेड शांभवो बायाक्तिपाया तो महद हृद अनुसंधान नाथ मंद्र वीर अनुभव महद हृद इज ए ग्रेट वाटर नो हृद मीन्स फॉर्म बट हियर इट मीन्स महद हृद full of experiences full of good qualities so the <coughs> infinite reservoir of all divine powers all the powers is called mahadrata so like he is uh, if somebody can ask how he gets all these powers what is the source of these powers in yoga sutra also fourth chapter there is a sutra there the same question is asked how this yogi gets all these special powers from where it comes then it says it is from prakriti itself prakriti is the grand source of all these powers so here it says maha hrata anusandhanana if you know the infinite resource of the divine powers if you meditate on that you will be connected to that power so this is how they get all these things we can we have so many stories of yogis people may say you no know, all these mystic uh, yogis and gurus they do all this you no know, they are not very uh, what is there how <laughs> sometimes they do some wrong and people say something about them but uh, if you see in a different level how they gets this because a normal person who is trying to do things in the world he is unable to do even with his all qualifications and this yogi is the so called yogi is there they don't have any qualifications they just do something and then everything will be there how it happens so there is something there is some special quality they got so they say sometimes kundalini shakti and all those stories are there but we don't know what what happened but something happened some special quality they have people are accepting and then the whole world is accepting and they getting uh, they they can do things that others cannot do 
It has always happened. It is all real. And when it happens, you know, in the world, now in the modern world, if you do something, there are chances for uh, wrong deceit to happen. There are so many chances. Some, something will ha- happen in between also. But it doesn't uh, mean that everything is wrong. Everything is papa. No. There is some good thing. Based on that, everything is happening. So therefore, he says this, ro- this uh, source, the source of this uh, divine power, this Mahahrata Anusandhana, the yogi gets mandra virya anubhavaha, the power and experience of all the mandras and sadhanas. Mandras are the secret syllables of shaktis. So, chanting mandras on sadhaka can evoke his own shaktis. The evoking secrets power is called mandras. It is called sometimes bija mantras. There are techniques and formulas how we form bija mantra. It is all connected to shakti. So last we have seen that matrika. Matrika is also syllables. So they are all connected to mantras. So when we chant mantras, in our uh, physical body, it starts from the physical body. See, uh, some point, some point of energy point is uh, activated. The brain is activated, through that the energy point is activated. And then, from our own brain, our own body, we create this special energy with mantras. So that is the speciality of mantras. So only for concentration, it's not only for concentration. Normally it is thought that when you chant mandras, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Marivya, this is all for the concentration. Not only for this, for the concentration you can say anything. If you say uh, bread and butter, bread and butter, that is also for concentration. The mind will be concentrated because mind should get something. But mantra is not like that. So there the syllables and the chanting rhythm has a special energy which activates your brain uh, no, in, a, in a special way. That is only we can say. That is called mantrika. And all the energies are connected to this mantras according to this shastra. According to this uh, yoga philosophy, they, the mantras are the key points or keys to open the energy points. So, mandra virya anubhavaha. So, this yogi will get all the powers, the special powers of mandra. The virya means special powers, energy, special energy of. So, therefore, is the mantras are very important in all these sadhanas, all these upasanas. Chanting correctly is also important. If you chant wrongly, the energy is different. Correct swara, correct tune is also important. That is called chanda. So each, each mantra has one chanda and one devata and one rishi. The three are connected to each mantra. So the rishi who gave this mantra, he got, he, uh, the rishi got this mantra from divan. The mandra uh, appeared in his mind. So that rishi is called the mandra rishi. Then the chanting tune is called chandas. Chandas, the meter. The tune, how we chant it. And each mandra has a one devata. The deity connected to that mandra. Which help you to Involve that devata and mantra, and then the mantra sati is involved. So when you meditate on that special uh, shape or special devata, so that energy is formed. So the, each mantra has different forms because each mantra has different color, different form. Everything is different. All connected to this energy, how it is created. So when we meditate on that and take that mantra's form. It is easy to 
invoke the mantra. So therefore, these are all connected to that. So mantra, vidya, anubhava, we will have all the experiences uh, connected to this mantra. So this way uh, we have uh, summarized the first uh, part of Shiva Sutras. So Shambhava Ubaya is completed, the 22 Sutras. Now we will learn Shakta Ubaya from tomorrow. Okay. Om Purnamataha Purnamitam Purnat Purnamudasyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishyate Om Shanti Shanti